Okay, I'm just going to record me working my way through these questions that you are doing and then I can upload them in case you need me to talk through anything. Okay, so I'm on page 233. Hopefully you already have these done. So number two, a wheelbarrow loaded with sand is wheeled along a level road. The weight of the wheelbarrow and the sand in it is 1,500 newtons and that is shown on this diagram here. Um, calculate the moment of the 1,500 newton force about the pivot. So we know the force is 1,500 newtons and we can see here in the diagram the distance from the pivot is 0.4 meters because the pivot is going to be the, the center of the wheel. And then all we have to do is put that into our moment equation. So moment equals force times distance. 1,500 multiplied by 0.4 so 600 and my unit because force is in newtons and distance is in meters my unit is going to be newton meters so that's straightforward enough b calculate the size of the effort at the handles so if this is our pivot here and We've got the weight acting down here and the effort has to act up the way, this way. Then the way that we would calculate this is to say that this is balanced. Because really we're trying to calculate the size of the effort that is just big enough to start lifting this. And at that point it's not going to be balanced anymore. So we calculate what the, the size of the effort force is when, it, when it's still balanced. But just still balanced and just before it's about to go. So... We're going to have to use our anti-clockwise moments equal clockwise moments. And if this is my pivot, this weight here is going to be making this turn anti-clockwise. So I'm just going to label that. And the effort is acting clockwise. My uh, laptop doesn't seem to be able to cope with these videos very well. So sorry, they're a little bit jerky. Anyway, so I'm going to start this off by saying anti-clockwise moments are equal to clockwise moments. Okay, so anti-clockwise I have my force from the weight of the wheelbarrow and the stuff inside it and then my clockwise comes from the effort. Now, one thing that I quite often do that some of my pupils really like and some of my pupils really don't like, so you can decide what camp you're in here. I like to label this to show which one I'm talking about. So I'll just like stick brackets around that for my anti-clockwise. That is for this one here, so I just label that with a wee subscript, 1500. And for my clockwise, that's the effort, so I'll just stick a wee E for that. So this little step, I suppose, is not 100% necessary, but it helps me keep organised in my work, okay? But for some reason, people sometimes hate it. Eh, don't know why. So, for my anti-clockwise moment, the force is 1500. And the distance from the pivot is 0.4. For my clockwise, which is the effort force, I'm just going to stick to calling that F. You could call it E if you want, but I'm just going to stick with F. And the distance it is from the pivot is 1 meter because it's 0.6 from here to here. And then 0.4 from here to here. So that's 1 meter all together. So 1500 multiplied by 0.4 gives me 600 is equal to 1 times F, so that's F. So my effort force is just 600 newtons. So there's that answer. C, what force acts at the pivot? That's just going to be that normal reaction force because this is in contact with the ground. The ground is going to be pushing up on it. Do you remember, um, it was in that video that I uploaded yesterday. The or maybe I, well, it depends what day I upload this video on, but it's from before this. And um, just underneath in your notes where it says the principle of moments about the forces up equal forces down, and I spoke in it about the whenever things are in contact with each other, there's a, an, a reaction. So the normal reaction with the ground. Oh, look, terrible, I did the number, that's number two. 
Okay, number three. A force of 600 newtons, where's that? It's here, just raises the jockey wheel of a caravan off the ground in order to attach the caravan to a car. Um, see the diagram below and calculate the weight of the caravan. So it's the same idea as up with the wheelbarrow. We're calculating the size of the force that is just enough to keep this balanced and no more. Okay. So first of all, we need to think, well, where is the pivot in this situation? Well, the pivot is the, the center of the wheel on the caravan, okay? So, start off, because we're just about balanced, anti-clockwise moment, or equal to clockwise moment. So, the weight is acting anti-clockwise from this pivot here. And this 600 is acting clockwise. So that's how we know which one's going where. So for the anti-clockwise, my moment is going to be force times distance. And that's for the weight. is equal to the clockwise moment, which is force times distance for this 600 one. So hopefully you see what I mean about just organising the thoughts there with those wee subscripts. Next step, fill in what we know. So weight is what we're looking for. I'll go wild and label it as W this time. Distance to the pivot is 0.5 and then for the 600 newton one the force is obviously the 600 newtons and the distance to the pivot is 4.5 meters. So they see the way they've done this in this question and in the wheelbarrow one they're sneaky. They um, don't give you the total distance and loads of people will, will make that mistake. It's fine if you made the mistake now fine to make the mistakes now, let's get rid of them before we have to actually do the exam. So 0.5 W is equal to 600 multiplied by 4.5 is 2700. So I just divide both sides of my equation by 0.5 and that gets me 5400 and it's a force so it's measured in newtons. Okay, so hopefully if you got those wrong, then that was helpful to you to see where you went wrong. Let's look at the next one. Okay, so number four. School caretakers often use trucks such as the one shown below to move heavy objects around. The design of the truck makes it easier to lift the load and the wheels make it easy to move the load from one place to the other. Copy the diagram. We have to, but already have it. Mark and label the position of the pivot. So the pivot is going to be here. Mark the load force and the effort force needed to lift the load. So the load is going to be this bit here. And if you're ever marking on the diagram, mark forces in the direction that they are acting in. So the weight of this is going to act from its center of gravity. So I would mark it on from that point there. Oh, dodgy line. And that's the weight. Oh, hang on. They've asked us to label it as load, so I'm going to change that to an L. Okay. And the effort force needed to lift it. Now, my instinct would probably be to mark that on that way, but that's wrong because if you think, if you imagine yourself using it, what way are you going to pull your hands on this? You're going to be pulling them back towards you. So the effort force actually goes this way. Okay, so that's part one done. Part two, explain using the idea of moments why the design of the truck makes it easier to lift the load. So I'm going to answer this up here. Now, if this is our pivot and the distance between the load and the pivot is this little tiny distance here and the distance between the effort and the pivot is this big distance here, it means a much smaller effort force is needed because you can get the same moment from a small force and a big distance. So the load, big, big force, small distance, will balance out with a small force with a big distance. So, okay, really freaking out. Okay, right. Um, so let's try and get that into words. The... Effort force is applied at a greater distance from the pivot. 
so a smaller force is needed. A small force with a big distance can create the same moment as a large force with a small distance. I should have said really from the pivot earlier, so I'll set my from the pivot. Okay. Right. This bottom one here, so for each of these, calculate the weight A and weight B. So I'll call this A and this B. So for A, if they're balanced, anti-clockwise moments are equal to clockwise moments. So here's my pivot. Where's my other pen? Let's get this a little bit better. Okay. So A, if this is my pivot here, A is going to be making this turn anti-clockwise. And this one, the two newtons, is going to be making that turn clockwise. I'll do this one while I'm here. This one, anti-clockwise. This one, clockwise. So, for my anti-clockwise, I've got force times distance for A is equal to to force times distance my clockwise for this 2 newton force here. So just call that 2. So A multiplied by 0.4 or if you wanted to leave that as F you could. I probably would do either. Mix and match. Is equal to 2 newtons multiplied by 0.3 because that's the distance it is from the pivot. So 0.4 A equals 0.6 that's going to be 1.5 and this is a force so it's newtons okay i'm going to try and fit b in this space here so for part b again anti-clockwise moments are equal to clockwise moments okay so here we go um, our anti-clockwise is the 4, so force times distance for the 4 is equal to the clockwise force times distance for B. So 4 multiplied by the distance to the pivot is 0 0.25 equals B multiplied by the distance to the pivot 0 0.2. So 1 equals 0 0.2 B, that means B is 5 newtons. Sorry, I have divided by 0.2 on both sides to get that and also switch sides just to confuse you that little bit further, you know. Okay, so that is those two answered. I am going to go on and do these now for you, but I will upload that in a separate video because I've set that as separate classworks. Okay, so hopefully those um, questions up to the end of 2, 3, 4 went okay for you and if it didn't don't panic hopefully my obviously amazing explanations helped you okay see you next time